Hello friends, welcome back. In the previous sessions, we had introductory discussion on the LLMs. This session, we are going to take it forward to the next level and we will understand prompting a little better. This is going to be a very interesting session and I am certain you will love it. What is a prompt? A prompt is a question or a command you give to a computer program like a chatbot or a text generator. You can even take ChatGPT as an instance. Whatever you are asking, that's called a prompt. Whatever you are feeding in, that's called a prompt. It tells the program what do you want it to do and what do you want to talk about. That's exactly is the prompt. Simple example can be, tell me a joke. It can be a prompt. That's it. So prompt is something like a question or a command that you give the system. Now what is prompt in LLM? A prompt is an instruction to the LLM. It is an instruction. If you have interacted with ChatGPT earlier, whatever you have fed in as an input, that's all prompts. A prompt refers to the input or an instruction provided to the model to generate a specific response or output on any topic that you have chosen. Ideally, a prompt elicits, it provokes an answer that is correct, adequate in the form and the content and has the right length. The system will be able to provide you the right answer through the prompt that you are feeding in. So, a good prompt is something which will generate good answer. We will talk more about it and it will be very interesting. Prompts can vary in complexity and format depending on the task you want the model to perform. I can have a small prompt, I can have a step-by-step -step prompts, I can have a longer prompt. It all depends on what are you trying to do with the model. They can be as simple as a very single sentence or it can be complex as detailed set of instructions also. The quality and the specificity of the prompt can have definite significant impact on the quality of the model's response. It's very, very important. If you have very good quality prompt, if you have specificity embedded in the prompting that you are doing, then the response would definitely be better. I'm going to show you a simple example that we have obtained through the chat GPT itself and the question itself is what is a prompt in LLM? That's the prompt. The question that I'm asking is the prompt. And in chat GPT, OpenAI uses GPT 3.5 LLM. And if you want to explore the luxury of chat GPT 4, then you need to pay. That would probably give you more detailed responses. Now you can see that the response has come for the prompt that I have fed in, which is nothing but what is a prompt in LLM. So you are getting the result based on the prompt that you have fed in. Right, another example is here. You can also enable chat GPT or any other similar system to act as an expert or a guru. Here I am prompting to get the task done. You are an English expert. You need to correct the grammar and the mistakes that I do when I am typing or whatever I am feeding in. You can ask me question first. This is what I am prompting. Now it is immediately responding. The chat GPT is responding. I would be happy to help with any grammar or vocabulary questions you have. Please go ahead and ask your question and I will do my best. That's the response. So you are setting up the chat GPT to be your English expert, to be your teacher. A prompt refers to the input or the instruction given to the model to generate a response or to generate or to perform a specific task. So see that we are using prompt in different ways. I can ask what is the score India made yesterday in the match against Nepal. I can also ask the system to be my English teacher. So it depends on what do you want to perform. The structure of the prompt is very interesting. We will talk more about it in near future. I'm going to talk in depth about it as well. But for now, you look into the structure. The get underscore completion is the function that calls the chat GPT API with a given prompt and it will give you the response back. So we have got prompt and model as the arguments being passed there. And you can see the next line, which is messages that will contain the role and the content. The role can be user. It can be assistant. It can be anything. And the content is nothing but the prompt itself. Tell me a joke. What is the score of India yesterday? Will India win tomorrow? What do you think? These kind of questions can be added as the content, which is nothing but the prompt. And next line is the response, which is having three different arguments to be passed in. And we are using openai.chatcompletion.create, which is going to get the model as input. Messages, you got it in the earlier stage. Temperature is another thing that we need to understand. The temperature is all about the degree of randomness. Increasing the temperature could lead to more randomness. And that would obviously increase more diverse or creative output. So more the value that you feed in for the temperature, the answer could be really diverse. 
so we will talk about more on this and we will go ahead with coding and examples in the near future but for now you just understand the structure now a zero shot prompting is the next topic that we need to discuss zero shot prompting this is a very simple easy to understand thing you are directly prompting the model for a response without any examples or demonstrations about the task you wanted to achieve you are directly prompting the model the sky is that's all you can see that it has generated a response now complete this sentence the sky is is the next one so you can see that that is also getting your response so it is all about you are directly prompting the model for a response without any examples that you have fed in or demonstrations that you have given in it is expected to give a response and you do not have to teach in detail about every specific thing it uses its general knowledge to get the result it's like translate this sentence to the french that you are pushing it in as a question and it can do it even it has not been trained it will still try to get you the better results so understand the point zero shot prompting you are directly prompting the model for a response without any examples or demonstrations that you are feeding in i am not giving much detail there but still i ask do we have any limitations in this yes some large language models do have the ability to perform zero shot prompting but it definitely depends on the complexity and the knowledge of the task at hand when zero shot does not work it is recommended to provide demonstrations more examples in the prompt which will take you to the next level called as few shot prompting zero shot you are not providing any demonstrations we will have to learn that as well so you can see that here i have got an example so few shot pr prompts enable in context learning which is the ability of the language models to learn the tasks given a few demonstrations i already demonstrate i give input we provide demonstrations in the prompt to steer the model to get better performance this is awesome you can see that here this is awesome i say that this is positive this is bad i say it is negative so i demonstrate now when i throw a question wow that movie was terrible then it is negative because i have fed in the inputs that are way that it can understand very clearly from the references that you have given from the demonstrations you have given from the examples you have given this is called few shot prompting it is like showing a clever computer a few examples and to help it understand what you want you do not have to teach everything just a smaller number of examples can make it look very nice it's a bit like saying look here are few sentences in the french now translate the english sentence into french and it can do it because you have already given inputs to it and it can take learnings from there and please understand this is the upgradation of the zero shot prompting you give inputs you give demonstrations and it performs better let's get into the next one we need to now understand the limitations of the few shot prompting standard few shot prompting works very well for many tasks but still it is not a perfect technique when there is complex reasoning required when the requirement goes a little complex when there is reasoning required in that it's going to be tough few shot prompting will not work well for those tasks which require more reasoning steps if it is straightforward you may get the results but if it requires more of reasoning it may not sometimes whatever uh, was learned by the model is not enough for the model to get the output as we expect having seen the uh, limitations of the few shot prompting we need to have an example to understand things better here what i'm doing is the odd numbers in this group add up to an even number 4 8 9 15 12 to 1 i am just feeding in an input i am giving a description as the answer is false similarly i go with many instances here and i throw a question then the odd numbers in this group add up to an even number 15 32 5 13 82 7 1 <laughs> so if you see this when you add that you get 41 but the system is saying it as true the question is the the reasoning that it gives is wrong though we have trained it though we have given multiple instances here when it goes to more of reasoning based when it needs more of reasoning this fails so we need to go with the next step when the zero shot failed we went with few shot when the few shot fails now we have the next one that is called a chain of thought now we can see an example here we will go with the question with the standard prompting and then we will show how exactly the same thing works with the chain of thought prompting roger has got five tennis balls he buys two more cans of tennis balls each can has three tennis balls how many tennis balls does he have now the answer is 11 this is standard prompting now what do i do is i throw the next question in the standard prompting format i have i have given this earlier and now what i'm doing is i'm throwing the next question the cafeteria had 23 apples if they used 20 to make lunch and bought six more how many apples do they have 
with this as the base now this question is thrown what happens is the result is 27 which is actually wrong so what i do is i go with chain of thought prompting which is going to be little more elaborate little more reasoning will be there and see the way i have given the training here see the way i have given the answer here roger started with five balls two cans of three tennis balls each is six tennis balls five plus six is eleven so i'm going more elaborative and the answer is eleven is printed here answer is 11 is given here now the next question the same question is thrown here with the chain of thought prompting and i get the right result now chain of thought prompting enables complex reasoning capabilities through intermediate reasoning i am giving a lot of intermediate reasoning here i say roger has started with five balls two cans of three tennis balls each is six tennis balls intermediary reasoning is given very clearly and that helps this is called chain of thought prompting the same example whatever we have discussed earlier is being given here but see here adding all the odd numbers 9 15 1 gives 25 the answer is false i am giving more intermediate reasoning i am making it more understandable and now when we throw the question it will be able to get us the answer correct now see that 15 32 5 13 82 7 1 the odd numbers in this group add up to get an even number earlier we got the reply as the answer is true Though it is odd number here 41, it is saying that it is even number. Now with this approach, it is giving us the right answer. The answer is false. Now when you go with this approach, which is little elaborate and we are breaking the complex issue into smaller thing while we are giving the feed, you need not even give this many insight, this many instances as example. I am just throwing one question here. I will be able to get the answer. I am just throwing one instance here. I am able to get the answer. So we get perfect result with this kind of reasoning step. Now we are getting into the zero shot COT prompting. The same question, Roger has got five tennis balls. He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have now? Answer is 11. Now I take a different question. A juggler can juggle 16 balls. Half of the balls are golf balls and half of the golf balls are blue. How many blue golf balls are there? Now answer is eight, this is wrong. Now. I go into few shot COT. I am still giving the question, but you can see the reasoning I provide here. Roger has started with five balls. Two cans of three tennis balls each is six tennis balls. Five plus six is 11. The answer is 11. Now, when I am throwing this similar question here, you can see that the answer is correct because I have given more reasoning here. I have broken it into a better way. Now, I am throwing another question, but for the zero shot uh, prompting, I throw the question answer is still wrong right the answer is still wrong but what is zero shot cot it is nothing but you need to tell very clearly that let's think step by step we are going to tell that manually through an input that let's go step by step at a time and this will definitely make the system go step by step and this is called as zero shot cot so we have discussed all the prompting types and i hope you understand it right now and chat gpt now goes in this approach Chat GPT goes with zero shot COT even without you, ex you explicitly telling it. You can see that it is taking it by properly breaking it down into the sequence of events. So that's how the Chat GPT has advanced. This is very simple. And in this session, we have understood clearly the prompting, types of prompting and all those things. I hope you liked it. In case you have questions, you can always type it in the chat section and I'd be really glad to assist. Thank you.